and lift and out and take one step back. Now before this exercise even begins, we've got to make sure that the lift is in the anatomically correct position to both produce force and distribute force through the spine. So that means chest up, that spine locked in that neutral position. Feet need to be a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. Chest up, looking ahead, what I want you to do is sink slowly down with all your effort keeping your chest up as much as you can. Good man. Let's do six of them. Good. Now one of the fundamental keys to this exercise is keeping the chest up through the entire motion. A lot of lifters don't realise that you expend more energy on the way down, getting yourself into the right position to be able to get the bar back up again. And a big part of that is to keep the chest up the whole time. By keeping the chest up and avoiding that excessive forward lean, you're actually placing yourself in the biomechanically correct position to exert the most force through your glutes and your quadriceps. So whenever you're teaching this exercise with your clients, always get them to focus on the descent, on the way down, and to keep that chest upright. Now when you're spotting this exercise, I know that you're gonna see a lot of trainers and a lot of lifters adopt this position here. Now, the problem with that is, you're actually limiting that center of gravity and also you're increasing any potential for any injuries that may happen. For example, if the lifter here should lose his balance and go forward, then I'll end up going forward with him. But conversely, if the barbell lost balance on one side, by being under here, you're not really in a position to help that person get that weight back to that position again. Apart from the fact it doesn't look very professional, I really recommend placing your hands in this position here so that as soon as there is any forward or excessive lean, you're right in the right position to control the bar. Okay, Rich, let's go. Chest up. So if there's something wrong, I'm right here. Because remember, all the lifter needs, he doesn't need someone to help him lift the entire weight out of the block. Slowly down again, mate. All you're looking for is just the slightest touch, if they're in trouble, to get them out of that bottom position. The lifter should be strong enough to be able to get the weight the rest of the way. Okay, let's go. Good man, three more. Good. Good, chest up, that's it. Chest up on the way down, work hard. One more. Good. Okay, now with the squat exercise, feet position is obviously very important. The problem is a lot of people don't put their feet in the right position for them to be able to actually use the most weight they can safely in this exercise. Generally for most people, they're gonna to need to place their feet a little bit wider than shoulder width. So if you like, Richo, have your feet just a little bit wider. That's it. Now toe position. You'll hear a lot of people say things like, put your toes in and it's gonna work the outer part of your thighs. Or, if you put your toes out wide, it's gonna work the medial part. Again, when we look at what the science tells us, what the research shows us is that those things are minimal considerations. What it comes down to is the amount of overload used. The more overload, the more all of these muscles are recruited. Conversely, when you put yourself in a position where you use less weight, you recruit less muscle mass. Okay, mate. So have your feet pointing with your toes out straight over your patella line. Okay. Now, chest up, slowly down. Good man. Five more.
So really note in this exercise how the bar travels directly through the midline of his body. Particularly when he's in, down in that thigh parallel position. The mass is evenly distributed. I want you to also note how Richo is going right down to thigh parallel. Going to thigh parallel is key in this exercise to getting the absolute most out of this exercise. Unless you go to thigh parallel, recruitment through the glutes and the hamstrings is quite minimal. So when working with your client, always try to strive to eventually get them to a point where they can at least get to thigh parallel. It may take a few weeks, it may take a few months, heck it might even take a few years. But as long as you're progressing and as long as your client is progressing in terms of getting more out of the exercise, they're going to see much better results. Now see this position here. See how Richo's leaning too far forward on the way down? What that's going to do is actually place a lot more stress on the lower back. From side on, what you can see is when Richard leans forward, you can see now how the bar's moved away from that midline where it travels right through the middle of the body. Now whenever that happens, the fulcrum actually changes. And so therefore, you've got a lot more stress placed on here and a lot less stress placed on here. Okay, so what we need to do, keep your chest up, all right. Slowly down, working hard to keep that chest up. Good. Now if your client or yourself can't get to this position in squatting, and believe me, a lot of people can't, then it's up to you to work on your flexibility and your hip and gluteal strength to enable you to do this exercise properly. Because until you can, you're not going to get anywhere near what you should from this exercise.